start with an oval dissected horizontally and vertically. We have the eye line sits in the center of the head. And if we go one third from the eyes up to the top, we can basically, I should say two thirds, we can basically set in the hairline. You can see it's not just a round circle, it has some shape to it. I'm blocking in where the fashion eye will sit, leaving an eye's distance in between the two eyes. And you can see it's a modified football shape, a little bit longer, a little bit narrower than the normal eye. Looking at a close-up, I'm going to flatten on the inner circle and the lower outer circle. And then I shape a curve in between those two, start feeling the shape of the eyeball. a larger circle and the iris sits on that ball and of course we're never going to see the whole iris because she would look like she was in shock. Feeling the eyelid now curving around that eyeball. Adding a little bit of eyeliner, a little plane of the under lid and of course a lid will cast shadow so I throw some shadow onto the eye and a nice dark pupil with a highlight in the iris, defining the tear duct, turning that corner up a little bit so it looks more glamorous. Now I'm going to find an angle from the nose up through the pupil and I'm going to make sure that the arch of my brow sits more toward the outside of the head. We never want the arch of the brow to be in the middle of the eye. And the more I arch the brow, the more expression she has in terms of looking a little more wicked Lashes sit to the outside of the eye. I just suggest lashes. I'm never too literal with lashes. You can see the under lashes are little groupings. Now I'm starting to shadow and feel where the nose sits in relationship to the eyebrow. You want to find some connection between the two. I'm giving her a nice arched nostril, a little bit of a feeling of the side of the nose, keeping it rather simple. The, uh, the nose should be the least defined feature on the face. And I'm never going to show both sides of the um, structure of the nose coming down. I just want to suggest it. Now the mouth, you can see in close up, is also a modified football shape. I'm defining the center of the lip, giving it some shape. A nice arch. Now the center of the mouth gives her the expression. It echoes the top, as you can see. A nice thick under lip. Remember, the female mouth is thicker than the male, vertically and narrower horizontally. I'm defining my, taking my hairline into the ear, which sits basically from the eyebrow down to the bottom of the nose. Remember, the ear is basically shaped somewhat like a, a seashell. It has beautiful curves. You want that shape to look graceful. Defining the cheekbone, which heads toward the corner of the mouth. As you can see, it's just, you don't have to take it all the way there, but it, that's where it's going. Giving her a nice, soft, feminine jawline. You don't want it to be too strong or she's going to look masculine. And keeping the chin also a little bit soft, a little bit curved. Feeling the shape of the bone. Now remembering that hair always adds volume to the head, so I'm putting a little bit more on top. Just feeling the shape of the hair. It's best to look at hair first as a shape, and then you can always go in and add lights and darks and highlights and things like that. Just a loose feeling of the hair shape. If you're going to do long hair, you want it to have a rhythm. Either that or be absolutely simple and straight. Profile. Of course, we're seeing the full back of the skull. Nice curved female forehead and keeping the nose fairly small and delicate. Notice how upturned the lip is. Don't want to make her look 
the lip look flat. We want a lot of expression in the mouth, and you can see that there's a definite space between the two lips. I'm also drawing the mouth slightly open, which even increases that space, and it's a nice, relaxed, sort of sensual look to the mouth. Again, keeping the chin fairly small, keeping the jaw soft, creating a slight underplane of the neck, but you have to be really careful to keep that parallel to the bottom of your page. You don't ever want that to drop down. Arched nostril, soft feeling of the back of the nose. Now notice how our eye sets at an angle into the head. The plane is dropping back under the ridge of the brow. The eyebrow circles around the ridge. Now the lid will circle around the eyeball. I have a sense of where that eyeball is as I draw the lid around it. I'm sure I'm aware of the curves, just a feeling of the iris and keeping the eye fairly closed. Again, it's a nice sort of fashion, mysterious, glamorous look. Giving her eyeliner, curving the corner upward. Again, more glamorous. If you drop it down, she can look depressed. Now just defining those lips a little bit more. Okay, turning that outer mouth up slightly so she doesn't look angry. Keeping that jaw very, very clean. That keeps her young. Feeling of where the hairline sits. A little bit dropping back where a male head would recede. placing my ear at an angle as well on the head and feeling the cheekbone. Always looking for those bony landmarks, defining the bony landmarks. And where the darks would be so our profile doesn't look flat. Again, looking at the hair as a shape is creating kind of an upward feeling to create a bit of glamour, keeping the, the neck slanted forward so she looks relaxed, and also keeping it delicate. The ear, remember, I think of a seashell, everything curves around in a very graceful manner. Again, notice that it's at an angle. merges into the skull, leaving some highlights, feeling the sternomastoid coming from behind the ear, coming down and connecting into the pit of the throat, the clavicle. Nice curved brow into the nose. A bit more lights and darks for accents. Softening up my chin slightly. I have a tendency to make them just a little bit too angular. If your female looks a little masculine, first thing you want to think about is softening up that chin.